Don't worry, no cats are gonna be harmed in the filming of this video today as we make cat head biscuits. In the South, we're just referring to a really large, soft buttermilk biscuit, and I'm gonna show you how simple these are to put together. Join me in the kitchen. All right, let's make some biscuits. So we're gonna start on these cat heads with 190 grams of all-purpose flour. And the recipe also calls for 190 grams of cake flour. Now that's something I don't really keep on hand and I don't really expect you to keep it on hand. So I'm gonna show you how to make, you know, an impromptu version. So for every cup of all-purpose flour, you wanna take out and replace it with some cornstarch. So I have my first 190 grams of all-purpose flour over here. I have a second 190 grams right here that we're gonna turn into the cake flour. So I'm gonna take out, because this is about a cup and a half, I'm gonna take out a tablespoon and a half of the, of the all-purpose, and I'm gonna replace it with a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch, and that's what I have in here. I've already got it measured out for you. So we're gonna put that in and stir it together. It's just that simple. You don't have to keep an extra ingredient on hand. You can also do this with um, gluten-free if you want to. It's a little bit different. Sometimes you have to get that to bind together a little different. So if you have questions about gluten-free, please let me know in the, in the comment area and I'll answer you. Okay, so put both of those flours together. That's a total of three cups of flour that way. And I'm just gonna kind of work them together just a little bit here. And we're gonna go ahead and add our fats. Now, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put our leavenings in. So I have baking powder, baking soda, and salt. There's actually quite a lot of baking powder here, almost a whole tablespoon. So just make sure you've got fresh leavening agents on hand. If your baking powder is more than six months old, there's a good chance your biscuits won't rise right. So make sure it's fresh. All right, so we'll just work that into the flour. And we'll do fa our fats now. So this recipe called originally for four tablespoons of vegetable shortening. We don't use vegetable shortening anymore, so I have refined coconut oil here. This is actually no coconut flavor when you buy it refined, but if you have vegetable shortening and that's what you wanna use, it's completely fine. You can also use unrefined coconut oil if you don't mind the flavor, but I don't want everything I eat to taste like it's been on vacation in the tropics, so I don't always love all the coconut. Then we're gonna go in with eight tablespoons of cold butter. Make sure it's very cold because the way that we get the flakes, this, this recipe is more of a drop recipe, a drop biscuit, so it doesn't have quite the same flakes, but you do need the butter to stay cold for the texture. So put your butter in, and I'm going at this with a potato masher. It's easier for my hands, but certainly you can break this up with a couple of knives or forks. You can do this in your food processor if you want to, but for me, there's something really nice about being able to do this with my hands, you know, um, and, and have my hands in my recipes. I make all my bread by scratch, you know, from scratch by, by hand, and I don't use any bread machines. It just is a nice experience for me. So I'm gonna break all this butter up, get it down to about the size of peas, and I'll be back to show you what to do next. Now I've gotten all the butter kind of broken up. There's still some big pieces in here, but for the most part it's small and that, that's what we need. So we're gonna go in with one and a quarter cups of buttermilk now. And I always have a little extra on hand just in case I need it, but I'm gonna put most of that in. We'll hang on to part of it just for a second. This dough is very, very soft. It's not the kind of thing that you would wanna probably roll out on your counter. And that's what makes a cat head biscuit just a little bit different is that they're more like a drop style. So when I say drop, it means that you can put it on a spoon and scoop it off into a skillet and cook them from there. So let me put all of that in. Definitely gonna need it. Let me get that stirred up. And the thing you have to remember too is that Depending on where you live, if the humidity is very high, it can be really tricky with measuring and adding liquid. So you may need a little bit more, you may need a little bit less, depending on your environment. In the summer, you're gonna need a little bit less than you do in the winter, probably. Okay, let's see. I'm still a little bit dry. Let me grab some more buttermilk. Okay, we'll just use the whole thing. We'll just bring it with us and then we don't have to wonder. All right, so let me, I'll get it mixed up here. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like and then I'll be right back. Okay, that was closer to about one and three quarters or so cups of buttermilk. So you can see, if I tip this up, it's really, really sticky, right? And so this would be pretty tricky if you wanted to roll it out on your counter. So we're gonna put this into a skillet. And this is my beautiful Smithy skillet. 
me and my impeccably clean hands here. And we're going to just scoop these in in mounds into the skillet. I'm actually really not gonna to need to grease the bottom of this or anything, but you just take a big pile. That's why I got this giant spoon because we, we want them to be big. Big as cat's heads, that's the whole point, right? And you just scoop it off into your skillet. Now, I prefer for ours to touch, so I'm gonna put these pretty close together because they are gonna rise and puff in the oven, of course. And you might need, um, you don't have to do this in a skillet, but you might need a bigger cookie sheet, anything that can hold them all. If you need to do it on a couple of cookie sheets, that's okay. I'm just gonna pile these in here. This is actually one of my family's favorite biscuit recipes. I do traditional ones as well, but this is one of their favorites. So I'm gonna get three, five, this is number six, and I'm just gonna plop him right there in the middle. Okay, and I'll put the rest of these on a different pan. These are gonna go in the oven at 400 for about 20 minutes or so, and just until they're puffed up and golden on the bottom and they'll be ready to eat. Show you in just a little bit. Our biscuits are out of the oven and you can see why we call them cat head biscuits. They're huge. They're kind of lumpy on the top. That's how they're supposed to look. But when you take one out, they are so light. They're really hot too, but if you can see, they're just really light, really tender. I'm gonna put this guy out here and see if I can cut him in half for you. The cake flour kind of helps with that texture, but look at that. They are like little pillows. So let's put some jam on this. This is homemade by my mama. And you can just see that these are wonderful. They will be a wonderful addition to your next breakfast. If you have somebody in your family who really likes a softer biscuit, this is the one that you would want to try. For my classic buttermilk biscuit recipe, you can check out this video right here, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.